It is I, your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend. And it is my sad duty to inform you that not all legends are triumphant. Indeed, I myself have chronicled my share of tragic legends, where the cost of victory is often paid in blood and lives. And so it is today, as we continue the extended road of distinguished champions. Released in 2016, Dawn of Justice is the second of the DC Extended Universe movies and paves the way for the Justice League and Wonder Woman movies to follow. However, it was notoriously poorly received on first release. The Batman takes it upon himself to put an end to Superman. Yet they are both deceived by the machinations of another, unpredictable technologist Alexander Luthor Jr. It should be noted that I shall relate to you upon this day the details of the Ultimate Edition, an extension of this legend. Then we can escape it no longer. Now witness the machinations of a madman writ large, as I present you the Dawn of Justice. Let it be known that while Kal-El and Druzod brought ruin to Metropolis, Billionaire Bruce Wayne watched on from below. Yes, Bruce Wayne, who may need no introduction. Yet still, it was he that watched his parents die in front of him as a child. It was he that swore an oath to destroy crime and evil, though such a task is functionally impossible. And it is he, Bruce Wayne, that haunts the Knights of Gotham as the Bat-Man. Let us then direct our attention 18 months hence, where an interesting rock is found. Behold, Kryptonite, the radioactive heart of the Kryptonian world engine. Tested upon the corpse of General Zod, it has proven to be detrimental to Kryptonian tissue. Were such a mineral to fall into the wrong hands, Superman may prove far less super. And a stalwart journalist secures an audience with an African rebel general. Though her photographer is not what he seems. Indeed, such would be the end of Miss Lois Lane, were she not under protection. And in the city of Gotham, the protection extends to the innocent, whether they wish it or not. It is, surely, not the mission of a Batman to scare the innocent and guilty alike. Clark Kent journeys to the city of Gotham on the trail of the Batman. And Bruce Wayne is following a trail also. It is quite the coincidence, then, that both of these trails lead to the mansion of one Alexander Luthor Jr. And yet, who is that alluring lady in the red dress? Ah, my friends, the identity of this mystery woman shall be revealed as our legend unfolds. Of course, Miss Lane is also following a trail. One would expect that Tuareg rebels in the African deserts might not have the greatest of financial reserves. How is it then that they are able to afford private security, much less private security, whose weaponry is loaded with prototypical ammunition? Ah, my friends, this is all but one part of the machinations of Alexander Luthor Jr. There are more to follow. The Batman attempts to retrieve a very important mineral. He is not successful. Superman has been called before the American Senate. Yet they are all of them deceived. And in the chaos, the 
Batman retrieves the all-important mineral, which leads Mr. Luthor to a secondary solution. Using the corpse of Druzod and adding his own blood for good measure, Alexander Luthor Jr. seeks to create a beast that might succeed where man may fail. In the ending of Superman. Though a professional journalist can find details that even the authorities may miss. Wallace Keefe, once an employee of Wayne Industries in Metropolis. His legs were greatly and gravely injured during the battle between Superman and General Zod. Bruce Wayne sought to soften the blow by keeping him at least financially supported. However, these checks were intercepted by a third party and returned, daubed with crude slogans. Enter Alexander Luthor Jr. with a brand new wheelchair for Mr. Keefe, one containing an explosive that was kept in a box lined with lead. And why lead? Ah, for the simple reason that X-rays cannot penetrate lead. So it is then that a man prepares to battle a demigod. And yet, there are others. But I am getting far ahead of myself. We shall return to this topic at a later date. So it is then that the grand battle takes shape. Enter our challengers. I have to go to Gotham to convince him to help me. It hardly needs stating that Superman is not successful. So it is then that the Batman and Superman are forced into combat. And it is no small feat that the Batman is all but victorious. Enter then Miss Lane at the critical moment to reveal the truth of this great deception. And enter the Batman to rescue Martha Kent. Behold then, Doomsday. Superman looks to the sky, but this beast is stronger than a nuclear missile. The Batman seeks to bring this encounter to an end, and yet his human frailty is all too apparent. Enter then the mysterious woman. Yes, this lady of mystery is, in point of fact, the Wonder Woman. And yet there is one weapon that can defeat this beast. And one man who absolutely should not wield it. Witness then the defeat of Doomsday and its terrible cost. However, Alexander Luthor is incarcerated for his crimes. Such is the legend that is the dawn of justice, and, despite its tragic ending, still I deem this legend worthy of remembrance. Including credits, this Ultimate Edition cut is 182 minutes long, and in my opinion it's objectively better than the cinematic cut, because it explains an awful lot. 30 extra minutes to iron out the plot holes, the who, what, where and why of the conspiracy to frame Superman as a menace, which was neither shown nor told in the original cut. And there is one performance we have to mention. Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne and Batman is the mix of superficially charming billionaire and cold steely bat that I'd expect of a decent Batman. He doesn't disappoint. Cavill's maturing Superman and crusading Jerno Clark are decently driven as is Amy Adams' Lois Lane. Providing spiky and acidic pseudo-levity are Lawrence Fishburne's Perry White and Jeremy Irons' Alfred Pennyworth. Of Irons, he is very much a combat butler, saddled with the upkeep of the bat arsenal and assisting from the base. And then, 
There's Jesse Eisenberg's Luthor. A twitchy, nervous billionaire, with a self-deprecating defence mechanism, many at the time, not least the nostalgia critic, considered him more akin to the Joker than Lex Luthor, though perhaps we've been spoiled by Clancy Brown's mellifluous vocal turn. This is a Luthor who doesn't scheme to become more powerful, merely to try and put feet of clay on a Superman because of his own familial traumas. And for what we see of Gal Gadot, she is at least believable as the woman who will yet get to know in her own movie. The flow then. This movie was never going to be the smoothest, and with several subplots, it could have all fallen apart. And that's more apparent in the cinema cut, but the extra scenes certainly help tie it all together. And they do help explain that Luthor was behind it all, and also, a lot of commentary does do a great disservice to Lois's role in undoing the schemes of Luthor. She saved Clark from a chest full of kryptonite, she risked her life to retrieve the spear, and she worked out long before anyone else that Lex Luthor was trying to frame Superman. If anything, she deserves her spot on the cover more than Wonder Woman's extended cameo. But then, this isn't a perfect movie. Neither the regular or ultimate cuts. The whole Bat brand subplot seems wholly the invention of Zack Snyder, who again loves him some collateral damage, and David Goya's script has a moment where even Superman doubts himself, not to mention that ending. Again, killing off Superman? How could they? Why would they? Because the whole movie seemed to be saying that there's nothing super about Superman, and I can't go with that. And the less said about that dream sequence, the better. Although, if the franchise building was rather forced, and it was, it at least showed us what the Justice League might look like. And that's something. So, should you watch this movie? Yes, it's a genuine Superman and Batman movie, featuring daring reporters, dashing heroines, lunatical villains, that fight, and a whole lot more besides. It may not be the movie we needed at the time, or even the one that we deserved, but for what we got, and for what it is, I can't bring myself to hate it. And with these words I direct you to that greatest of sights, the subscription button, and its scintillating sidekick, the notification bell icon. And that you would be my hero, consult the sacred texts below to chart a path to my financial salvation, or in your language, crowdfunding. I shall return seven days hence with that which the extended road of distinguished champions provides for the origin of the Wonder Woman. Until that time, I remain your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend, and I bid you, dear viewer, good day.